I guess I should start there. It has been an absolutely crazy, crazy week and I don't even know where to start. So let's start with this. This is my new office. It is not even remotely close to being done yet. This is just the radiology station that I had set up for me at home. Yes, that's right. I'll be reading x-rays, MRIs, CTs, ultrasounds, all from home. I can dictate everything from home. And I did that almost the entire weekend. I just finished because, now that you've seen the title of this video now, I just finished my very first weekend of diagnostic call as an attendant. And it was, wasn't too bad, but it was pretty crazy. And here's why. So first and foremost, I want to say, I'm sorry about the echo in here. I'm trying to put some more items in here to make it less echoey, but I don't really know what to do. I'm going to put a rug in here. I'm going to put some stuff on the walls and all that stuff to hopefully kind of dampen some of the sound. But for now, it's going to be a little echoey. Secondly, my plans for this office. So I have like a whole office off to the side of our apartment. It's three bedrooms. One of these bedrooms slash den is literally just my office where I do all my radiology stuff and then also I'll do all of my editing, YouTube stuff and all that stuff. So you remember my last background where I had the big monitor, the white screen? Two things about that monitor. One, I still have it. Two, I may have cracked the screen when I was getting ready to move. So I may have to get a replacement and I may actually go wider. We'll see. Secondly, a new desk is coming my way. So this is my old desk. As you can see here, I'm going to be doing like an L-shaped standing desk from Autonomous. So the whole thing will stand as well, which I've never actually used the standing portion until I did my call shift, but more on that in a minute. So I have three monitors here. This is all for radiology stuff. Main radiology hinges go in the middle, dictation, and the actual list is on the left. This is going to be the same part of this L-shaped desk. And then on the left side, I'm gonna put my big monitor, which is on the floor and probably cracked. I have a Monitor stand on that side for this monitor. This monitor is on a couple of books here, so that's fun. Then I have my iPad playing a little stock market action back there and uh, a little stock market on the side of everything. So yeah, not a bad setup so far, but it's not even close to being done. We just kind of rushed to put this together just so I can have it for my call weekend. Why are people yelling? It's a brand new apartment. Why are people yelling? Also, I'm going to like add some more lights in here and stuff too, to make it nice and fancy, like very studio-esque. So more on that coming soon. And if you want me to do like a whole desk setup slash office remodel video, let me know in the comments below right now. So now let's get into my crazy call weekend. So <laughs> in private practice, it is very high volume, which I'm okay with, but I haven't read diagnostic studies in a very long time until this weekend. Well, this whole last month I've been reading them, but this was my fourth week, which means it's time for me to, to grow up and take a diagnostic weekend call. What that means is we do two 16 hour days back to back, purely diagnostic call. I said that right, 16 hour days, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Just by hearing that, you realize it can be pretty brutal, right? Well, it's brutal, but less brutal as well. So on Saturday, I have to go into the hospital from 7 a.m. to around 4.30 p.m. because you have to be there in case anybody needs you. And you read literally nonstop like nonstop. I think I read almost 100 studies before noon. So th that's crazy. Then at five o'clock ish, I come home and then I sit here until 11 p.m. and read from home. And then at 11 p.m. a Nighthawk service takes over and they read until 7 a.m. The only problem with that is I have to reread all of their studies when I get in the next morning. So any stat ED study overnight, I have to reread the next morning because they can only prelim the report. So then Sunday morning, start off at 7 a.m. again after working until 11 p.m., 16 hours in a day, wake up at 7 a.m., I have like 30 studies on the list from the night before and I have to read all of those, hopefully before 8 a.m. when scanner starts picking up and all the hospitals open back up and start scanning all the patients. So as you can see, it's a pretty brutal weekend. Somehow I got through it. And the difference is, is I was also on interventional call as well this weekend, but I didn't get called once. Only somebody called me one time about a biopsy, but that was it. So I was actually double dipping on this 32 hour week. 
So yeah, I read a mixture of mostly CTs. You read about 50, 60 CTs, abdomen, pelvis, heads. We read a lot of ultrasound, um, probably like 10 or 12 MRIs, mostly outpatient with a few stroke MRIs here and there, which, you know, I felt pretty comfortable because I had exceptional diagnostic training. The only difference is I haven't really read a lot of diagnostic stuff in the past year and a half because I'm doing only interventional work. And that's fine, it's just like, it's like riding a bike. I still have the knowledge up there. You just have to get your repetition and your speed back up to kind of keep up with what's going on. Because for me, I get really bad list anxiety, that's what we call it in the radiology world. When studies are just constantly piling up on your list, I want that thing empty every time. So I read a study and I want it done. Read a study, done. So when one pops up, I'm already done with the previous one. That way you don't have like 20 CTs on the list just looming over your head and stressing you out the whole day. So that's that, ended up doing pretty well. I read a lot, I probably read about 200 studies on Saturday and then 160 studies on Sunday. Oh, and I forgot to say, I was on interventional call this entire week plus the weekend, so seven days of IR call, which means I could go in at any time, as you know from seeing many of my prior videos. And then I was also on diagnostic call this weekend working 16 hours days, both days. And then I was, I forgot to say, I was also also on emergency diagnostic call the entire seven days as well. So if someone needs to call me about a study overnight for an emergent situation, like they needed an emergent read or emergent finding they wanna talk about overnight, I was the guy to go to as well. Luckily, nobody called me for any of that, but nonetheless, I was on call the entire week. Crazy, right? Welcome to private practice. This is what we do here. Now, obviously every private practice is not set up this way. Ours is very much work hard, play hard. We work really hard for the weeks that you're on and then you get at least a week off a month or so because vacation is important to my group, myself as well. So you work hard when you're on and then you don't work when you're off. Pretty good situation if you like that. Some people don't like that, some people do. A friend of mine who I finished fellowship with, they have a very overstaffed practice and they don't work that hard, but they don't get that much vacation. So it's all a trade off and you kind of pick a private practice that fits you. So with that being said, today is now Monday. It's after the weekend and after my seven day stretch of call, which is kind of crazy because I never thought I'd do a seven day stretch of call and much less 32 hours of diagnostic call. I thought that was done in fellowship and residency, but here we are. The only difference is now at least I get compensated for it. Residency, you to pay pennies. So I guess it's like, it hurts less. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't even gotten a paycheck yet, so I don't even know if it, if it hurts less. I don't know. But nonetheless, did that. Today is Monday, and you saw me wake up, grab my coffee, and went straight to my desk to start reading. And that's because every now and then, once a week, twice a week, every now and then you get to work from home, and it's usually after a post-call day. So today, I got to work until like 1-ish, 2-ish p.m. So I just sat here and read for a couple hours, made sure the list is clean, and then I'm done for the day. So it's not a bad get up, to be honest with you. So I'm done for the day, and since I've been on call this whole time, I haven't studied at all, so I'm about to go do that. Hopefully you kind of like this whole catch-up video. I have a move-in kind of vlog coming soon, but I didn't film it yet because I'm waiting for a product to be sent to me for an advertisement, but I just want to kind of catch you all up because you probably have no idea what's going on in my life because I've been like MIA Central, homeless, moved in with my mother-in-law, now I'm back. Now I have some weird desk set up. You guys like, what is this behind you? Things are changing, but they're changing for the better. So stay tuned. That's all I got. We'll see you on the next video, I guess. Follow me on uh, TikTok and Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. See ya.